friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and today I want to talk about house light control and some of our favorite problem solvers when it comes to house light control. And then last, uh, a little wish I have uh, for uh, some ways that we can make some things work together to help people get better control of their house lights without getting into a really complicated system. Let's dive in. So today we've got a couple things in front of us. Um, first, we have these spring tree wall panels. Now, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with these wall panels, but they're a very simple wall panel. Uh, we like them a lot. We recommend them to a lot of people. And basically, we've got two of them right here. Um, this is the main SMA and this is the satellite, the SSL. Uh, the cool thing about these is they're just a simple DMX wall panel. So right on the back, you go in, DMX in, DMX out, that goes to your lights. Uh, so the DMX in comes from your console, the DMX out goes to your lights. You put it into program mode, pressing, holding buttons one and A, it turns red. Um, you can save different scenes in, and then you just hit the buttons, and you see the wall stations stay in sync. Um, they're all powered off the main station. Uh, works really well. Okay, uh, we've been really happy with them. Customers have been happy with them. And these are one of those products that we do sell at Learn Stage Lighting Gear. You can also get them through Springtree Direct. Um, and we offer them because we, we do truly believe for a lot of smaller spaces, these are the best fit in product and in performance for value. Um, there's not a lot of margin in these things. We're not making money uh, when we sell these. But honestly, we just want to make sure you guys get the, the right thing in your hands. And these have been really reliable uh, when installed correctly and all that jazz. Okay, uh, but the problem with a system like these is uh, a couple things. One um, is if you have, for example, um, say you have a DMX node. Okay, so here I've got a Netron node from Obsidian Control Systems. Oops, over here. Um, and this is a EN4. Uh, they also have the EP4, four port nodes. And say, for example, I have my main DMX line uh, coming out to lights here on port 4, and then I have another one going to some backlights on port 3, maybe port 2 is house lights. Uh, these are all coming from a console. They're all, uh, let's say they're all in the same DMX universe for now. Um, and they're coming over the network, coming out of this EP4, and, and uh, so I've got three ports coming out, right? Um, I could also do this on this EN4. Uh, uh, if I had an uh, EN12, I could do up to 12 ports, okay? And I've got one port open, though. And so <clears throat> what I can actually do, which is kind of cool, is bring in the DMX remote separate uh, to do a couple things, okay? So uh, basically, we want to look at the, the uh, basically, the... Uh, overall uh, view of the cabling and just the structure of this rig and this setup, right? Um, and so with a lot of modern consoles uh, or PC software, you're going to send out ARTNET or SACN data and it's going to go to a DMX node like this EP4, okay? Or e this is the EN4. But the EP4 is like the same thing, just no LCD, uh, no knob here for control. You do it all via network, okay? And so if you're using that kind of setup, which oftentimes, let me tell you, the cost of these uh, EP4s, the, the lower price model without the controls on it, uh, for a church that's installing their own lights, it's going to be cheaper than going and getting a separate node from somebody and then getting a separate uh, DMX splitter and wiring them together. And when you do that, you're not going to, most of the time with the cheaper DMX splitters, you're not going to have RDM. Uh, so if you're using a console like Onyx that can talk back to fixtures, you're not going to get that functionality. Okay, so a lot of times it makes sense to go with something like uh, one of these nodes to output to your lights and just use it basically as a combination of a splitter and a node. So it's taking the data in via network on the back and it's passing out DMX through the DMX ports. Okay, um, what that basically does is it's going to allow you 
uh, to come on in and I don't know what just happened to my data from Onyx. That's okay. Uh, nothing like a live show. <laughs> but uh, but anywho, um, you know what you're gonna want to do and what this will do for you basically is you go okay. You know I'm coming in network into my node. It's coming out you know three or four ports or however many to my lights on the same universe. Well, if you do that and you want to use a wall station like these spring tree ones, uh, it's not going to work, okay? And the reason why it's not going to work is these require DMX to come in from the console, to go through, and then go out. And that's how the takeover is managed. That's how it decides, okay, if it's getting data from the console, boom, wall station's locked out, okay? So... Uh, the long and short of it is, we can actually use functionality built into these Netron nodes, um, which they're not any more expensive than anybody else's. In fact, they're cheaper than a lot of other brands, but really well built. Uh, so we can use some of the inbuilt functionality in order to have the Netron handle the merging. Okay, so basically what we do is we go ahead and I've gone ahead and wired uh, from this spring tree here. Okay, so we come out of here and I wired it straight to port one on my Netron node. Okay, now I'm using some DMX adapters here and this is pretty key because what we're gonna do basically is we're going to set first, set up our console, okay? We're gonna have DMX flowing out to our lights and out of our Netron node, we've got uh, all of our ports active, let's say, okay? And we're gonna have them all output DMX universe one, okay? All universe one. We're gonna come in this terminal block here, the screen, we're gonna put it into the input here uh, because the spring tree needs to see input to go into record mode and to record the scenes. We'll then go ahead on our console, we'll output that DMX for our various scenes, we'll record them into the buttons following the spring tree manual, okay? Then we go ahead and we take the terminal block on the back of the spring tree, we switch it from input side to output side. Now, the spring tree is just playing back scenes, okay? The next part is what makes it really cool. Okay, so we go over here to Netron, and I should be able to show you it on camera. Let me know if you, hopefully you can see that good. And we're gonna go ahead to our port one here. So DMX ports, port one, we're gonna set that port to input. Uh, I chose universe 11, just any universe we're not using. And today I'm using Artnet for both uh, Onyx, for Onyx, so I'm gonna also use Artnet for the input on universe 11. Okay, done. Then I go back, I go to port four in this case, I'd go to all my other ports basically. And I'm setting to output Artnet universe one. Okay, so, what that's saying basically is Universe 1 is my main console. It's what I'm doing in Onyx. You could be using Lightkey. You could be using Emu, any software that outputs Hardnet. Okay, that is the primary output for this Netron node, but wait, there's more. Okay, so we scroll down, protocol Hardnet, blah, blah, blah. Um, then merge options. So we set merge to backup. The merge universe is 11 because we're bringing in the data from the spring tree on port one. It's turning into Artnet universe 11, okay? And so now it's merging that in as a console backup. And so the beauty of this is now, okay, we can have our PC in the back running Onyx, running Lightkey if it's a Mac, whatever software we're running. And maybe our node is in the front of the room. And so is our wall panel. So they're all close together, and we can program up our wall panel, switch it to an input on the node, set it to backup for the other ports, and now we can control all the rest of the ports of this node on the same that are on the same DMX universe uh, without having to have another DMX splitter without getting more complicated. We can just do it all in one box, and so it's really kind of handy. So just as a quick demo here, uh, right now I'm outputting green on this light out of Onyx. Okay, if I unplug Onyx or if I shut down the program, I turn off the computer, it stops outputting. Okay, look, now we turned red. Okay, because we've gone into backup mode on the Netron. You can see here I'm going to switch uh, presets here on the spring tree. 
red, green, blue. I just did one, two, three, red, green, blue. I think there's like a pink here or an orange or something. And I can go throughout different presets, including eight, which is my off, okay? Wall station works great. Plug Onyx back in because we're in backup mode. Um, Universal one on ArtNet gets that priority. So now back to green, which is what we we're outputting from Onyx. And I can press buttons all day long on this, red, green, blue. It's still outputting that data here to the node, but ultimately it is not, um, it's not gonna go ahead and actually show that output unless we turn off data from our console. So this can be a really cool way to kind of put these two uh, products together if you're doing a setup at a church or somewhere or a venue like that and you have this need to control multiple ports of a node on the same universe uh, coming out of a console a lot of times it's going to be the most cost effective way to not have to come out of a node go into a house like controller go out of that to a dmx splitter and then split different ways a lot of times it's easier and more cost effective to just pick up one of these netron uh, ep4s this is the en4 but the ep4 is a little cheaper and use that as your splitter and your node just use one of the ports to come in and boom you're done all right so i hope you've enjoyed this i know this has worked really well for some of our customers and we hope it works well for you uh, the one wish I do have is that uh, these Netron nodes do have Q playback possibility. And my one wish list item would be if I could figure out a way, I've been working on, I'm going to write to the team after this, to uh, be able to fire that Q to fire multiple universes out of one wall station. Um, that would be super cool, but um, right now it's kind of limited to one universe uh, within the same node or set of nodes because it is transmitting that as artnet across the network um, but using the q firing in the nodes doesn't quite work the way that i need to do for this application but that's okay still helpful um still if you're looking for house light control nodes you have any questions about any of this stuff and you're looking for a solution just hit us up at Loon stage lighting gear we would love to help you out thanks so much for watching have a great day and if you're new here Subscribe and grab our free guide over at LearnStageLighting.com to get you started with light. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye.